Hi, I'm Ben. I'm going to take you through a video tutorial of wiring a thermistor and acquiring temperature data in LabVIEW. This video tutorial is made for ME4031 students here at the University of Minnesota. Prerequisites for this are you have LabVIEW 2009 installed on your computer, an NIDIQ, probably 6008 or 6009, and a 2.2 kilo ohm thermistor. First, we're going to build a thermistor circuit, then measure the voltage data. The DAQ can't measure resistance or temperature values directly. We're going to turn those voltages values into resistances and then the resistances into temperatures. The thermistor circuit we're going to build is a simple, a simple voltage divider. We have a 5 volt voltage source over here right, available right from the DAQ. We're going to put two resistors in series, one of known resistance which is just a 1 kilo ohm resistor and the second which is the resistance we're trying to measure of the thermistor and we're going to measure the voltage coming out in between. The current going through each of these res resistors is constant so we can use Kirchhoff's law to find the voltage drop across the first resistor divided by its resistance, which is 1 kilo ohm, is equal to the voltage drop across the second divided by its resistance. We can solve the resistance for the thermistor to find it's a function of the voltage out then and R2, which is 1 kilo ohm. When we wire this guy up, I attach it to the end of leads so you can wire temp uh, temperature remotely. I put shrink wrap around each of the, th the leads of the thermistor here so they wouldn't touch, but if you're careful, you wouldn't have to do that. Then I use two thermistors in, in this circuit so I can measure two temperatures at the same time. You say I have the wire coiled up here and I have a little voltage divider built on the side of the DAQ like this. We look closer here. You see the resistor is connected to ground and AI4, which is the pin we're going to measure voltage on. The 1 kilo ohm resistor goes over to 5 volts. Same thing for the second thermistor. We have it going between uh, some pin we measure voltage on and ground and then that same 1 kilo ohm resistor which goes over to the 5 volts over here. Let's take in these voltage values using LabVIEW. We're taking voltage values using a DAQ, so I go under Express, Input, DAQ Assistant, Acquire Signals, it's an analog voltage, it's from the 6008, and we had channels AI4, hold on the control key, and pick AI7. If we want voltages to come in from two channels at the same time, you have to highlight two of them in the DAQ assistant here. You can't put two separate DAQ assistants in the panel because they both try and access the same device at the same time. It doesn't work. So you have to highlight two of them in here. Click Finish. Let's just take 100 samples each and click OK. What's going to come out here is a 2D array of values. So there's going to be one array that has 100 voltages in it, and there's going to be a second array which has 100 voltages in it. Those are both going to be columns. So if you think of an Excel spreadsheet, it'd be like one column with 100 voltage values in it, and a second column with 100 voltage values in it, which is a 2D array. First thing we need to do is convert our express data into something we can use. Use our from dynamic data thing here. It's a 2D array of scalars. Now I have two choices. Either the columns can be channels or the rows can be the channels. I just like the columns, so this is going to be 100 values long for each of these two columns here. Click OK. I'll wire these up. Now we need to separate each, each of the voltage uh, values from each of the channels into two separate 1D arrays so that we can work with each of them separately. The way we're going to break this up is using something called index array under array. We feed this 2D array in here. and see so we have two values here, column and row. Now if we put values in for each of these, it would return the single value that occurred at that column and row combination. But if we only put one value in for the column, say 0, it's going to return a 1D array which is every row in that column. Now we want to find the mean and standard deviation of those, of those voltages. Math, probably in statistics, mean standard deviation and variance. I'll wire this array up to here, and it's going to return the single value, the mean, and the standard deviation over here. Now you want to do the same thing for the other channel. So just highlight it, hold down the control button, just drag. Change this to column 1 instead of 0. Wire it up. And now this is going to be the, all the values for pin AI7, and this is going to be for AI4. All right. So now we have voltages coming out. We need to convert those into resistance. I'm going to use a formula block under Express Arithmetic Compare formula. Remember the formula for this. We have one input, which is the voltage coming in. So it's just the voltage divided by 5 minus the voltage. 
times the resistance, which is 1,000 ohms. Click OK. So what's coming out over here now is the resistance. Right click, create an indicator. Resistance, AI4, ohms. We also have the standard deviation, the voltage is coming out over here. The standard, oh, that's miswired. The standard deviation, the voltages is not equal to the standard deviation, the resistances. We need to do something else there. We need to propagate that error. The standard deviation, the resistance is equal to the standard, the sensitivity to that voltage times the standard deviation of the voltage. You take this partial derivative, you get 5 times R2 divided by the difference between 5 and V out squared times that standard deviation. You go one step further to find the uncertainty of the resistance. It's T times the standard deviation of the resistance divided by square root of N. When N is 100, T is going to be 1.96, assuming a 95% confidence interval. Go back to lab view. I'm going to use another formula block. Control, just drag that down. Right, carry that wire. Control B to clean up the wires. So that was just 5 times R2, which is 5,000, divided by 5 minus V squared. Then that's just times the standard deviation of the voltages. That's going to be the standard deviation of the resistances. We multiply that times our T value of 1.96 and divide it by the square root of 100 to get our uncertainty of the resistance. Click OK. I'm going to wire this up, so I'll wire the voltage down here, the standard deviation to here. And the output over here, which I'm going to create an indicator, is going to be the uncertainty of the resistance of AI4, which is going to be in ohms. Okay, so we have the resistance and the uncertainty resistance. Now we just need temperature. The way you convert to temperature is from the spec sheet from the manufacturer. They give you two different equations, one for, to convert to get the resistance from temperature and one to get the temperature from resistance. It's a function of four fit variables, A1 through D1, which are given to you, and R25, which is the re reference value, the resistance at 25C, and R is the value that you measure. So you just insert that equation into lab view. I'm going to control copy, make another equation here. Get rid of that. Beforehand, I type this all out because it's a really long equation with lots of numbers. So I'm just going to copy that and paste it in there. Just to note is that the double asterisks represent power and exponents are represented with a big E. We have the resistance coming in. And click OK. So we take that resistance now. We have temperature over here coming out. We create an in indicator and we call it temp AI4, which is in degrees K. I have all those hanging out over here now. I'm going to spread them out a little bit. I'm going to run it. So our resistance is about 2,500 ohms. Uh, which is, it's supposed to be 2200 at 25C, so we're pretty close there. Uncertainty is really small, uh, half an ohm, which is uh, less than a tenth of a percent error, and the temperature is about 295K, which is room temperature. Now I want to do this all again for the other channel, so I'm just going to highlight it all, hold down the control button, just copy it. I'm going to get rid of him. The mean goes to voltage, standard deviation goes down here. Control B to clean up the broken wires. And now we have everything again for the other channel. We run this. We see that they measure a little different resistances. Uh, uncertainties are both small, less than a tenth of a percent, and they measure the temperatures different here are about a half a degree K, which is more than 1% error. So that shows you that there's some bias error in here that we aren't accounting for that's pretty big, and the precision error for each of these is pretty small. So if we were to calibrate these, we could eliminate this bias error and get the resistance down the same. These both should measure the same thing. They're sitting right next to each other in the room. Other resources available to you are the spec sheet available from Vichet. Good luck.